So bad news for Steelers fans, actually just before I started recording this video, it has been announced that Ben Roethlisberger is going to miss the entire 2019 season, definitely very frustrating. I mean, there's no doubt about it, in my opinion, the NFL is better with as many good players in it, and Ben Roethlisberger is a good player, so seeing him get out for the whole season, it's definitely kind of disappointing. And with Pittsburgh already 0-2, I mean, that's just, it's kind of a tough situation. But that being said, you know, Ben Roethlisberger famously said when the Steelers drafted Mason Rudolph, I don't see how that helps us. Well, this is how it helps you. I believe the exact quote was, how does it help us win now? And, well, I mean, this is how, you know, if Ben Roethlisberger does go down, well, maybe you're not totally screwed. We've seen the Colts actually take the Chargers to overtime and then beat the Tennessee Titans. So, you know, having a solid backup quarterback does kind of mean that you are still in it to a degree. I think that for the longest time, having a backup quarterback in kind of was a death sentence. But I think that's because for the longest time, there was like seven good quarterbacks in the league at any given moment. But there has never been better quarterback play going on than right now in the NFL. I mean, there's legitimately like 50 or 60 guys that can be competent. Obviously, there's still some guys who are head and shoulders above the rest, and obviously losing Ben Roethlisberger is going to hurt no matter how good of a backup you have, but at least it kind of says that the Steelers maybe aren't totally screwed. Don't get me wrong, they're in a rough spot. They would definitely rather have Roethlisberger, but is this a death sentence? It's not a death sentence. It's looking tough, but not quite a death sentence. That's, what I, that's at least my opinion. And also, the bright side is, for all the people in the media, now you can make Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer jokes, so you gotta love that. But anyways, let's get into how he looked in his first NFL game, which he came in in relief against Seattle, which is no easy team to go up against in your first NFL start. I mean, Pete Carroll defenses tend to do pretty well. But I thought he looked good out there. I thought he had just about as good of a performance as you could ask for, and again... Maybe this guy could still be a competent player for the Steelers. I mean, he looks solid in his first game, and let's start off with this play. It's a third down and eight here, and what Seattle is going to do is they're actually going to be running a cover one linebacker blitz, which is something you could often do against this type of coverage. It's basically going to force Rudolph to make the throw quickly, and you're kind of just trusting that your defensive players can win their own one-on-one -on -one matchups. But for Pittsburgh, they have a receiver running a curl route right there on the top half of the screen. That's pretty much the best route to beat this type of coverage. And Rudolph knows that this is the throw that he's going to try to make. He already knows that's the receiver he's going to try to hit because he knows it's man coverage. There's several ways you can tell us man coverage, but really the, the most obvious one to explain is just that there's a linebacker who's lined up with a tight end on the bottom half of the screen. Unless you're just really trying to fool an opponent or something, which teams just would never do, this is almost definitely going to be man coverage because in zone coverage, you would never have a linebacker outside the numbers. And so Rudolph knows this. He does stare down his receiver because he knows that's where he's going to throw the ball to. It makes a very good throw that ends up getting tipped up and intercepted, but his throw is fine. I mean, that's just, that's a ball that has to be caught. I mean, that was Dante Moncrief and that's on him, really. I mean, that has to be caught. It has to at very least be caught and at the very least not get tipped up in the air for an interception. I mean, all around bad play by Moncrief, but very good play from Rudolph. He read the coverage well on a third down, made a very key throw, and it just, it didn't work out. But again, that's football. I'm not beating up on Moncrief. Sometimes you drop a ball, it happens. But it was a good play by Rudolph on that one. There was also this one where it's a fun one, where at first it's going to look like it's going to be a run up the middle. However, take a look what happens right when this ball is snapped. If you look at Juju Smith-Schuster right here, he's kind of jogging out, you know, not really doing too much. So you're expecting this to be a running play and he's trying to get in position to make a block. That's kind of what it looks like. And obviously with Mason Rudolph not having the ball, of course you guys are probably thinking this is going to be a running play because the halfback has the ball. So typically when the halfback has the ball, it's a running play. But of course, this is the flea flicker. Mason Rudolph gets the ball back and throws a deep one down the field. And if you look, I mean, it worked out perfectly. Juju is wide open here. So now the question becomes, how good of a throw is this from Rudolph? And, well, it was pretty good. I mean, pretty accurate. Pretty much all you can ask for for a deep shot down the field. Now, granted, Steelers fans probably are a little bit spoiled with having Ben Roethlisberger as their quarterback for so long, who can throw a great deep ball. So having a guy that maybe isn't exactly perfect, they might think it's a little bit worse than it actually was. But that's pretty much, that's pretty good for a deep ball. My kind of mindset is, if it's a deep ball that you're just throwing one up there, as long as the receiver has a chance, then you've done your job as a quarterback. Of course, some quarterbacks can go above and beyond, but you can't really ask for that, especially out of a guy who's literally making his first NFL appearance, not even his first start. He didn't know he was going to be playing this game. And I also thought that his timing on some of these throws was definitely pretty good. Like on this one, it's going to be a cover two zone, and they're going to have a tight end simply run that route right there, just to try to get in a little bit of gap in coverage and get underneath the linebackers, gain some yards, and make it an easier second down situation. That's all this play is designed for. Unless something crazy happens, this is almost definitely not going to be a highlight reel play, but not every play has to be a highlight reel play. In fact, most don't have to be a highlight reel play. And so after the ball is snapped, as you take a look as of right now, that tight end, he's getting ready to turn around and try to make a catch here. 
And so, of course, when would you want to hit him? Essentially, as soon as he turns around. But, of course, you also have to make sure that the defensive player isn't going to jump the route and pick it off. So, kind of right now is when Rudolph has to make his decision. And that is when Rudolph makes a decision. He throws it right away. And also, he had a very quick release on that one, too. That's something you like to see. Having a quick release is important, especially on quick routes like that. So, that way, it gives you more time to see that your receiver is going to be open and still be able to hit him. So, I really like that play from Rudolph. And again, if you're a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, that's kind of what you're asking for him to do. You don't need him to be Aaron Rodgers out there. Just make the solid throws. It's kind of one of those things I do talk about where, you know, the Bill Belichick saying of do your job. Usually when you think that, you think offensive lineman or a cornerback or something like that. But that saying is also very true for quarterbacks. You have to do your job. You have to do your part. And that's what Rudolph can do. Like, if we take a look at this one, it's going to actually be a cover one robber where one of the safeties is going to cover in the middle of the field and then the other one is going to cover the middle field, but just deeper. And so for Crosby, that's a good situation since he has a receiver on the top half of the screen running a curl route. And since this is a third down and eight, that's going to be a throw he's going to try to make. You want to get the first down here, it's going to be a one-on-one matchup with a cut, which, you know, Mason Rudolph, he feels confident he can make those types of throws. And so that's what they're going to do here. And so after this ball is snapped, as you see, I mean, that receiver is open. Rudolph can definitely try to hit him here. And for the throw, it's going to be, well, good enough. You know, I mean, it wasn't a perfect throw. It didn't hit his receiver in a perfect time. It didn't hit him in a perfect spot either. But you know what? He made the grab, and that's what's important. Kind of similar to that deep ball to Juju Smith-Schuster on the flea flicker. Neither one of those plays were particularly great plays. Neither one of them were perfect throws, but they were good enough, and that's really what you need. Mason Rudolph isn't a rookie. You know, I mean, this guy has had time to study NFL players, but he definitely is going to need some time to grow. He is a first-year starter, essentially. And with the exception of Patrick Mahomes, when it's your first time starting games in the NFL, usually there is going to be a bit of a learning curve, and you're not going to be perfect. But for Pittsburgh, they're probably just going to hope that he's going to be good enough, and I do feel like he was good enough and probably even better than good enough in that game against Seattle. And the reason why I say he was better than good enough in certain situations was, take a look at this one. This is going to be a cover one hole here, so similar to a cover one robber, but this time it's actually going to be a linebacker who's covering the middle of the field. And after the ball is snapped, well, long story short, you can't really see anything deep, but nobody's open right here. At least nobody's open enough that Rudolph feels confident in making a throw there. And this is a third down and five. You're inside field goal range, so you definitely don't want to take a sack or throw an interception. However, Rudolph also wants to get the first down here and try to score a touchdown. I mean, you are down eight right here with 13 and a half minutes left, so a touchdown would be key. But with nobody open, well, there still is one other option, especially in man coverage, and that's that he could run with the football. And since both his guards are doing a pretty good job on this play, that makes him feel pretty confident that he can run up the middle in between them and potentially pick up the first down or at least pick up some yards. Of course, the problem is there are two Seattle players in the area, so he's going to have some trouble here. But watch how he, he accelerates pretty quickly for a quarterback and is able to run and not go down instantly to pick up the first down. That's kind of just an extra factor that he could bring to the table is being able to pick up yards that way. That's something you like to see from a quarterback. Someone who's not going to take no for an answer, but also someone who's not just going to do something dumb. And he also had some improvisational plays to a degree. Like on this one, this is actually designed to be a screen pass to that stealer right there, Vance McDonald. However, after the ball is snapped, he's going to get covered up pretty nicely. It seemed like Seattle was aware that this could potentially be a screen pass. They're covering him up, and now Rudolph, he doesn't really have much to do on this play. There's another Seattle defender right in his face, and what would most guys do with this situation? You know what? Just throw it at Vance McDonald's feet and live to see another play. That's what a lot of guys would do here. But Rudolph instead is going to kind of pump fake and just wait a second. He just adds an extra second to that play, which in the NFL can sometimes be an eternity. Because now, McDonald is a little bit open. But this is a risky play. I mean, this ball could easily get tipped, or he could miss it. Something could go wrong. This is how defensive touchdowns happen sometimes, honestly. But he makes a good sidearm throw to McDonald, who's able to take it the rest of the way into the end zone for a touchdown. So, hey, when it works, it works. Very good play by Rudolph on that one. Not every play is going to have a 0% chance of something going wrong. That one was a little bit risky, but if he pulled it off, then who cares? I mean, if you can pull those things off, it's not really that much of a risk. Rudolph's final line of the day ended up being 12 for 19 for 112 yards, which isn't exactly too impactful. I mean, 5.9 yards per attempt. That's not really too, anything too special. He did have the one interception that wasn't really his fault, but he also had a couple of touchdowns, so that's kind of promising. In terms of passer rating for his first performance, which of course is not the best way to tell how good a quarterback is, but he had a 92.4, which is definitely very solid. 
among quarterbacks currently starting right now, that would actually put him at number 18, which is pretty good. Of course, very small sample size, but that should just at least give you kind of an idea of how he performed in his first NFL appearance. And so since he had two touchdowns, I already showed you one, well, let's show you the other one. The way this play is going to work is they're going to run play action to try to get the linebackers to move in, and then they're going to try to hit their tight end right over there, just over the top, and see if they can get the touchdown. Pretty simple concept, and let's see what happens right when this ball is snapped. I mean, as you see, this is almost too easy. Easily open, and there's no pressure. So this is kind of a dream situation for Rudolph here. So on these plays, you know, there's a 95% chance it's going to end up in a touchdown at this point. But what I like about these types of things to look at is how do they do after this point? And if you notice his throw, it's in a perfect spot, and it's also not too hard. He kind of just lobbed it a little bit. He threw it out to where only his tight end could make the play, even if he missed it a little bit in any direction, it still wasn't going to be an interception. And also, he didn't throw it too hard, making it easier for his player to make a catch. I know that seems like small things, and that's kind of because it is, but at the end of the day, those small things will build up over the course of a season. If he just tried to bomb that one through, there's a very real chance that that one ends up going off his tight end's hands. And while the announcers will say, oh, you gotta make that catch when they watch it in slow motion, sometimes throwing it too hard can make things very difficult. Of course, first things first, you gotta get it there, and he did get it there, but also you don't have to bomb them through all the time. You don't have to throw lasers. Sometimes you can just lob it a little bit. That's what Rudolph did, so I say it was a very good play, so I don't think the Steelers are totally screwed with Mason Rudolph as their quarterback. So let me know in the comments below, how do you think Rudolph will do this season? Will Rudolph be able to actually surprise some people, or are the Steelers kind of toast and will have to prepare for next year? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>